Creating the perfect person is a multi-billion pound industry, but how real is that perfection? Probably almost 100% of photos you see in magazines and on print uh, have certainly been through Photoshop. Their bodies don't meet some myth of perfection. There's a huge demand for perfect hands. I was her hand double. Supermodels and our models today are about 23% lighter than the average woman. Models aren't perfect. Shocking, isn't it? The world of beauty, fashion and advertising is fraught with fakery. For every blemished hand or misshapen foot, there's somebody providing a flawless substitute. Photo retouching has become the norm, but many people still underestimate its powers of deception. So if perfection is in fact an illusion, why do we seek it? Will it really bring us happiness? A lot of people nowadays want to become hand models. On an average, I have between 25 to 30 applicants a day. They're reading a lot of articles in the local free newspapers. You want to earn extra income? Become a hand model. Like it's so easy. In the hands modeling industry, like the general modeling industry, we have top hand models. And my top hand model and the top hand model in the whole of the UK is no one but Nina Taylor. Nina Taylor's hands have been featured in hundreds of TV commercials, magazine spreads, and on billboards. You might not realize it, but she's everywhere. Over the past 13 years, she's hand doubled for many Hollywood A-listers, but the celebrity that really elevated her status to hand supermodel was Kate Moss. Strangely enough, general models really don't look after their hands. It's uh, quite bizarre. But, so that's where I get called in. You know, Kate Moss being such a well-known model, I, I think people really sort of caught on to the fact that I was her hand double for all these Rimmel adverts. Of course, she's done so many of them. They'll want to have a hand that comes in and just sort of does this or does this or does that or whatever it may be. So you can just imagine a model standing there and me just crouching behind with my hand coming in. The curiosity of everyone about our industry is how much a hand model earns. It's pretty much on par with the model rates in general. Across the board, I would say between 100 and 150 pounds per hour. So it can be anything between 500 at the lower end up to 3,000 a day. While Kate Moss is the face of Rimmel London, Nina is the hands and feet. If you're working especially with a well-known name, you know, there's no guarantee what their hands and nails are going to look like. You get booked to do all the close-up beauty shots, the product shots, which are actually the really important bit of the advert. You know, forget Kate, you know, the important bit is the product. That's what I get brought in for. Advertising agencies often go to extraordinary lengths to make adverts look perfect. I do remember having to get into her outfit and then I had to sit on the bike. It was kind of fun and all they were actually filming, I don't know why I had to get into the whole outfit. They were just focusing on me doing the revving bit. The most iconic advert Nina did with Kate was for Rimmel nail polish. You see her do a spin and then just as she does the spin, it cuts. Then I do my shot and I go slam against the mirror like that. Of course, the mirror already had a shatter in it. Actually, it was really difficult because I had to get my middle finger right onto that middle point where it had shattered. The funny thing about this was that they were shooting all day with Kate. She left at six o'clock and then it was time to do all my shots. At 2.30 in the morning, I was doing all this karate chopping, not just the hands, they actually used my feet in that shot as well. And I remember having my foot up, really high up, and I think because I had to lean down like that, and I was holding on to the director or the producer who was also holding on to something else, it was just the most hilarious, surreal thing. The average person could never live up to the extreme efforts models make to maintain their assets and their beautiful hands sell creams that cannot make ordinary hands resemble them. One of the key things is moisturize, moisturize, moisturize. Moisturization is the thing that I do religiously almost. I do that, you know, 30 times a day, that is my main thing. At this time of year, it's very cold, you've got central heating on, that really takes its toll on, on the skin. Wearing gloves definitely is something that I do, certainly when I'm outside, certainly when I'm um, on set or in between shots as well. 
There's a misconception in the industry that a hand model just needs to arrive on set with their hands, but that's not the case at all. The model has to arrive looking the part as a model, and not just a hand model, it's the whole package. Even the bag you're carrying, because a hand model arrives with a kit. The kit is very important. It's not like your usual nail kit. I'll have two styles of wedding rings in there, because that's often required for commercials, gloves, towels, wipes. Makeup is actually one part of it as well. Nail file, nail varnish, transparent, pink, red and burgundy. These are a must. The hands business industry is a commitment. You can go on holiday, your hands cannot. You can dive into the, the ocean, you can char yourself under the sun, but these hands, uh-uh. My models, they're not permitted to gain weight because the minute they gain weight, it's not just the body and, and, and the face. You can see weight gain. No one wants a chubby forearm. Imagine if you're advertising a bracelet. You think it's gonna look nice on a chubby wrist. Oh, no. There are things they must do right because again, you can't have accidents. Chopping food when you're cooking. You can't just hold the cucumber and chop. No. You press with a fork and you chop the other end with your knife. You never know how close that blade would get and with it maybe scrape your skin or a bit of a nail. I knocked this nail. With this accident, I would now be out of work for three months consecutively. My hands are insured. They are insured for a seven-figure sum. The way we view our bodies is the mirror of how we view ourselves. For some, their body becomes the measure of their worth. Psychologist Kath Temple explores the pitfalls of the quest for perfection. We're bombarded with images of seemingly perfect people. This pursuit of perfection, given that it's not possible, is something that will always condemn us to being unfulfilled, to feeling like a failure, to feeling inadequate, to being continually dissatisfied with how we look. Even naturally beautiful models fall short of the high standards set by digital perfection. Retoucher Ben Klub uses Photoshop to enhance and manipulate photos. Probably almost 100% of photos you see in magazines and on print uh, have certainly been through Photoshop, often just for small colour boosts. But then that ranges right through to the photos that have been edited more thoroughly. You can go in and edit every minute pixel, so there's really no limits to what you can do. Whatever we see, we generally think of as reality. I think that's how powerful images are. Even for myself as a consumer, looking at magazines and print, I think you generally just forget that all photos have been through Photoshop and a lot of those might have been retouched. I think quite often it doesn't start off as anything sinister when people ask you to retouch an image. Like with any other industry, you're just trying to make something look as good as it possibly can and when you're working with an image, you're trying to remove all the imperfections and make it look perfect. Of course that goes on a scale from improving the image to actually changing the image. And when you move into kind of editing reality, you can get into weird issues. So the wider the gap between the way they perceive themselves, their body image, compared to that internalised, idealised image, the lower their self-esteem will be and the more issues that they're likely to have. Of course, a lot of retouching is subtle, almost unnoticeable. But if you want to, you can really push it to the extreme. Looking at this picture, the obvious things you might look at to retouch before it goes out. Immediately start with the waist, bring this in. Trying not to make anything look unnatural. That gives us our new body shape. You can really just slide up and reduce all the details that's in the skin. You can do that manually as well by painting. You can kind of see how quick and easy that is as well. Just bring the cheeks in here. You can really make this very unrealistic if you want to. Slim the nose. Hopefully you can see here that you can get any face shape you want and you can totally go in and edit everything. She's pretty moody. If you want to make her smile, again you can just pull the smile up, pull the corners. <laughs> and the eyebrows again, you can totally change them if you want. And there's our image and here's before and here's after. I think the quest for the perfect body most affects young women. Um, they are subjected to idealised images of women selling everything, from cars to toothpaste. 
For example, supermodels and our models today are about 23% lighter than the average woman. 88% of British women diet in a futile attempt to resemble those airbrushed, skinny bodies. The dieting industry is now worth something like 33 billion pounds, all coming from dissatisfied people. Harboring a negative body image has a major impact on people's lives. And if we strive for perfection, it can lead to a whole lot of problems. Body dysmorphia, anorexia, bulimia, OCD, anxiety disorders. Happiness and perfection are very different things. And in fact, perfectionism is one of the riders to depression. I've worked with a lot of young women who've self-harmed. I'm some of them from as young as age 11 and they're scarring their bodies because their bodies don't meet some myth of perfection. Real diamonds have flaws. The only diamonds that don't have flaws are synthesized diamonds, synthetic diamonds. And who wants that? Where is the true beauty, really? It's said that men think about sex probably every 19 minutes, but women and young girls think about their body and their dissatisfaction with it about every 15 minutes. How astonishing is that? That every 15 minutes we're feeling bad about ourselves. When we feel bad about ourselves, we're releasing cortisol, the stress hormone. Cortisol is pro-cancer, pro-diabetes, pro-arthritis, pro-aging. And when we make cortisol, which we make in the adrenal glands, we cannot make DHEA, which is the super hormone. So really every 15 minutes, our young women are beginning to feel bad about themselves, so they're in states of cortisol. Not good for our health and well-being, not good for our self-image, not good for the way that we think about ourselves, not good for our relationships with ourselves or our relationships with other people. Nina Taylor's work forms an integral part of perpetuating the myth of perfection. So what does she think about it all? I mean, my view is that there's a far too big obsession with celebrity and perfection. I totally agree with that. You know, people should go and read a book, you know, or ride a bike or maybe do something different. But I completely support my industry and what we do because otherwise, why would we have lighting guys, set designs, professional photographers, top makeup artists to make people look great? We're trying to sell stuff at the end of the day. It's advertising, but they don't need to take it all as if it's real and it's so contradictory because people are supposed to be so media savvy they're supposed to know what goes on backstage they know about retouching well get a grip enjoy the nice picture if it's done well you should never know that it's been photoshopped or retouched even if you're an expert i don't think that people understanding retouching and the fact that retouching goes on is going to totally fix the issue because uh, issues of idolatry and self-esteem obviously run far deeper but if people knew what was going on with retouching, it would certainly be a, a good start. We've got to start looking at ourselves as individuals and be accepting of ourselves. I think retouched images definitely do have a less than positive impact on people. It is giving them an unrealistic picture of beauty quite often. The media has a responsibility in portraying people as they actually are so that people can begin to look around them and start to feel very differently about who they are and what they look like. There's definitely a responsibility in the hands of the retouchers and the agencies to make sure that they're promoting a healthy and natural body image to people. Organisations like Dove and so on have real women and have actually increased their sales because they have real women in their adverts and I think women are buying into that much more. Responsibility is not just in the media, we buy magazines. We buy the products that women illustrate and sell. So it's partly to do with us as well. The myth of perfection is out there, but how much we believe in it is up to us. It's an image that has been constructed for a purpose. If you know that, then, you know, be happy with that. Otherwise, don't look at it and don't buy it. Happiness is to be found somewhere a long way from perfectionism.